Yeah, I feel because of the timing. I just, uh, you know, when we set the date, it's actually tomorrow's my birthday, so I don't do anything tomorrow. Well, that's and right. Happy birthday. I thank you. I mentioned that. That's great. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we've had uh, on a regular basis up until October, um, Franco Di Nicola. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He transitioned in October. And uh, he always he's been with us a couple of years. We did about 50 shows and um, his Intel is very similar to yours. In fact, you both have very similar makeup and uh, I don't know with him being gone and we've had some great shows since then. And uh, he's of course working with us on the other side of the veil. And uh, but I just thought, wow, you know, her coming on at this time with everything that's happened. I'm excited about that because uh, I know that you've got, you know, solid intel. And plus, I've been watching your vlogs, Morgan and I, and they're just uh, they're just on the money. So I'm anxious to see what's uh, what you've got, uh, you know, coming in and, and that type of thing. Let's see. OK, we're we're good. Uh, we'll give, give another 20 seconds to show. Let's see. I'm just going to pull up the comments on my page just in case yeah. there's something to. Here we go. All right. Okay. So, welcome, everybody. It's good to see you. I'm a little disheveled. My youngest of six came in to visit last night. So, it's been quite, a, quite an activation seeing her 19 years old and got the world on the string. Uh, these young people are just amazing. They just have a frequency. They don't even know it. Just being around them. It's like being around a tuning fork. But um, it's a pleasure to have Patricia here again. This is the second time she's been on. Uh, we had a huge uh, response. I think when I added up all the different platforms, there was a near 80, 80 or 90,000 views with the previous show that we did and still getting replays on them. But uh, for those of you who don't know Patricia, she's been in this game a long, long, long time. Um, a lot of people um, that I've connected with over the last few years are very familiar with her, and I wasn't familiar with her until the last show. But I've been watching her uh, Monday vlogs, and they're and they're very good. I like them because they're they're concise and they're substantial. So it's a good place to start off your Mondays if you haven't checked it out. Uh, Patricia's uh, YouTube, her uh, her vlogs every Monday. Uh, welcome back, Patricia. It's good to see you. Well, thank you, Todd. It's I'm very grateful to be here. Hmm. Well, let's jump right into it. Uh, we've only got an hour, and I know your time is precious. There, I'm just going to give a little backdrop. I don't know if my experience, I think to a degree it matches uh, everybody's, obviously, but uh, your vlogs seem to stay at pretty much identify what's happening. But I remember um, this all kind of started in October. Of course, this has been a heck of a year. And uh, it was the first part of October. I want to say maybe 1010. I don't remember if there was eclipses or full moons or whatever. But uh, it just seemed like we went through a real purification in October, leading us into November, which seemed to be worthiness, um, judgments lessening i mean it just seems like there's some really positive signs regardless of the distortion that's going on in the world in terms of personal individual expansion and as we know which composes or comprises uh the collective soul let's just put it that way and of course december has started off uh you know really powerful uh, these days, it seemed to have ones and twos in them, like 12, uh, December 1st, December 2nd. We've got the 10th, 11th, 12th coming. Of course, we've got the solstice. We, got the sec uh, we just went through a second eclipse. So there's so many things happening. Uh, and it just seems like, you know, the distortion's getting louder, but the individual, the individual awareness and expansion and all of the skills, abilities, and higher sensitivities that parallel that growth 
seems to be happening at the same pace. And it's really kind of strange. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the backdrop where I'm coming from. I don't know if you can confirm any of that or add to that or whatever you want to do, but we're all ears. Well, it's absolutely the truth. And interestingly, in the outer world, some of the world religions acknowledge today as the day of the celebration of Mother Mary's Immaculate Conception. And sometimes that's confused with thinking that's when she conceived Jesus, but it's really a celebration of when she was conceived and not that we can, I imagine, know exactly what that date was. But the celebration is meaning that she was immaculately conceived, me meant that she was coming in, the term, the religious term is without original sin, but it really means coming in karma free to really begin her life. But the immaculate concept that she holds for all of us is the divine blueprint. And all of the things that you've been mentioning, I mean, we have moved into now the full embrace of a life transforming new decade and literally miracles are going to be occurring during this decade. And the immaculate concept of that divine plan indicates according to our father, mother, God and the company of heaven, that in this 10 year period from 2020 to 2030, which is like a jump start of real transformation on the planet is that we are literally going to be changing the course of history for this planet. And the beings of light have said that a cosmic dispensation was granted by our Father, Mother, God, that is allowing the company of heaven, all of the legions of light throughout infinity to intervene in our lives in ways that was not even previously allowed by cosmic law. And that is what their, their terms that they have used is that the collaboration between heaven and earth for this transformation in this decade has never before been attempted. And what that means literally is that, and the reason it has occurred is because of the transformation and the awakenings that have taken place within humanity. And what you're talking about in the outer world, you know, we've talked about that before, and I know that everybody is aware of that, that there's such separation and such duality. And that is truly just the uh, negativity coming to the surface. And what's very interesting to me is that when we lift above that, that us against them, that duality, the, the grievances, the victim consciousness and all of that, even the extremes on both sides are very much striving for that highest divine potential. And it's interesting because in the lower consciousness, it looks like, like night and day, like they couldn't possibly be right working toward the same thing. But in my personal experience with our uh, connections around the world, which with Era of Peace, with our nonprofit organization, and we've been doing this since I've been connecting with and beginning this process since 1968. You and I've talked about that before. But this shifting, what is taking place in the outer world is that in our organization, there are, I think, probably just as many people on both extremes of that spectrum. And you'd never think that they could align with the spiritual movement forward and be as diverse in the outer world as they are, but they are. And so all of that, you know, whether we're talking about the you know, political or socioeconomic or whatever it is in the outer world, even the things going on with the medical and COVID and all of that, we're being asked, and this is the immaculate concept of the, of the new 2022 that we're moving toward, we're being asked to really raise above that consciousness and to focus on the reality of the changes that are taking place. And since the birth of this new decade in 2020, literally life transforming events have taken place within the earthly bodies of every person 
at an atomic cellular level. And we have reached this collective consciousness so that this is occurring through the divinity within each person, through the I am presence, even if they are not consciously aware of it, because we've reached this critical mass. And if we could just understand that just for a minute, you know, we talk about the oneness of all life and there's no such thing as separation and duality. And sometimes we think of this divine love as being kind of a sentimental, emotional, sweet sentiment, but it is actually the mightiest force in the universe. And what is happening now is that we are beginning to connect with this knowing and this understanding and a critical mass just to, so that we can all be on the same level of understanding you know in in quantum mechanics when we talk about uh electrons and energy and frequencies of vibration everything is made up of energy vibration and consciousness and when an electron is raising the vibration, I've been around a long time. So I remember when the scientists used to talk about this, when they were first discovering this, they would observe the electron rising in vibration. And the moment it reached the critical mass of the higher vibration, the energy from the higher frequency would absorb the remaining vibration. And it would create an unstoppable shift and the electron would disappear in the lower frequency and reappear in the higher frequency. This is what is occurring that's creating these shifts of the earth ascending up the spiral of evolution as we move through the shift of the ages. But what has happened now that is allowing this mass uh, shift going on within the masses of humanity through their God self their I am presence, is that the collective energy, vibration, and consciousness of humanity, the collective cup of our consciousness, which includes every man, woman, and child belonging to or serving the earth at this time, whether he or she is in or out of embodiment even, every man, woman, and child has reached this collective shift of consciousness of divine love. And I know when we look at the outer world, that seems impossible. But the reason this is occurring is because light is infinitely more powerful than all of the fragmented fear-based consciousness. So there are all kinds of variables and things that determine when something's going to reach a critical mass. But what the company of heaven has said for us to think about is that think of it as 51% mm -hmm. in order when 51% of the energy vibration and consciousness of the masses reaches a frequency of divine love, it creates a quantum shift. The other 49% of the collective consciousness of humanity is absorbed and the entire consciousness of humanity is raised into this frequency of divine love. So when you talk about light being infinitely more powerful, divine love, the mightiest force in the universe is of course is infinitely more powerful than the fragmented fear-based hateful kinds of things that are going on in the lower consciousness of humanity. So collectively we have now reached this quantum collective shift into divine love. So these things that are happening through the I am presence because of the oneness of all life are literally able to happen now through the cellular structures of every person on earth. And it affects each one differently, uniquely, according to what our experiences are, where we are in consciousness. But it is occurring within every person through their I am presence in perfect alignment with their divine plan and their highest good. So somebody really aligned with divine love and working predominantly through that frequency is going to be able to receive a higher influx of that light without blowing their circuits 
than someone who's really caught up in the negativity. Right. But nevertheless, that person caught up in the negativity in every moment that they are peaceful or they are loving or they are uh, gentle or adding to the light of the world. And everybody does throughout the day, some of the time even. That's when their I am presence just floods them with this frequency of divine love. So this is an awakening that's taking place kind of under the radar for mm -hmm. the masses of humanity that's causing us to be able to co-create these incredible shifts that you're talking about, Todd, that are happening right now at this very moment. Yes, what a what a great summation. I think she just summed up the uh, last 700 shows this year <laughs> without anyone actually explaining it that way. But it was such a, uh, a great synopsis of, of what's happening at so many different levels. Uh, one of the things that I really want to just kind of restate or reaffirm is what you said in regard to those that play roles that may seem polar opposite to us. Um, you know, this is something that I've mentioned on this show many times, like how do we not know that there are folks on the other side of the spectrum that are not receiving the same type of guidance and downloads that we are with, with direction, uh, but with purpose above the perception of say just a 3D standalone type of consciousness or comprehension. So, I mean, this seems to be materializing as well, because I've noticed, although there still is, um, you know, a little bit of uh, projection back and forth, obviously that's, you know, you can just see the, the frequency that you're talking about setting in as an example. I have a friend who's very funny and who uh, tends to be kind of warrior-esque. Uh, and, you know, she was telling me a couple of months ago how she can't even be that way anymore that she's wondering why she has all this peace going on. And, uh, and I thought that was a really good anecdote or example of, of what's happening. Uh, and you also mentioned uh, last time that you were on here, we talked about, because at the time it was a little bit different, um, although it was still on the same trajectory, just six months, whatever it was ago. And that's in regard to the energetic uh, understanding and reality of uh, free soul. Uh, free movement, unimpeded soul progress, uh, whether we can see that or not. But the point being in terms of how we're embodying things on this earth and at the heart of it, you said something that stuck with me. Uh, I don't know if I could even quote any of the rest of that show we did, but I asked you, you know, what's, what do you think will happen with these borders and with these travel restrictions, et cetera? And you said, you know, uh, I think you said, you know, very humbly, I don't know exactly how this will go, but uh, a soul is free and, and has to be uh, in uh, an expanding realm. Obviously, that freedom is going to expand as well. And that's something that we could very well see in terms of our physical experience as the soul embodies into the human. Uh, I, just to follow up on that because there's been more restrictions. There's a lot of countries really starting to shut down. Uh, this is not about uh, getting caught up in the chaos. We obviously all here understand that, but I'm just curious uh, because I see the alleviation of the, uh, let's just say the antagonistic type of energy. I see it uh, just dissolving uh, and it looks like it's kind of on automatic pilot, like that 51%, maybe that occurred in October. I don't know, but I just know that everything seemed to really shift dramatically since then. But in terms of, of, of what we might see, you said this is a decade of miracles. I totally agree. And they feel like they're like, could be 10 days away, 10 weeks away. But this freedom of the soul, th this in the physicality, uh, I would take that to, to mean that we're talking teleportation, bilocation, uh, dematerialization, rematerialization, and things that are way beyond our uh, once, uh, you know, human standalone perceived uh, con uh, comprehension level of, of what we could or couldn't do. What's supernatural? Are these the type of things that you're talking about or things like it? Certainly things like that, ultimately. You know, we're, we're a ways away from that yet because there has to be 
a, a different shift of consciousness. But what you're talking about is very much this uh, awareness that we're moving toward and the freedom of the soul is very much part of the immaculate concept of the divine plan that we're even moving in toward, toward 2022. As I've been sharing in the vlogs and, and this, there is a 40 day, we're in the midst of this 40 day period. And we'll talk about that in more in detail uh, in a few minutes, but uh, literally beginning on November 11th and building in momentum, we have reached this frequency of vibration. And we completed that shift in October, as you're mentioning, that allowed us to begin this 40 day purging process under the direction of the company of heaven. And this involves humanity, the elemental kingdom and mother earth. And the beings of light said it specifically involves the dismantling, the crumbling away and the dissolving of all of the old paradigms and archetypes that have manipulated, controlled and suppressed the masses of humanity for eons of time. And all of those frequencies, all of that old uh, energy has been perpetuated and sustained through the consciousness of separation and duality. Hmm. And the behavior that sustains that level of consciousness is uh, hatred, suppression, greed, corruption, all of the ignorance and abuse of power and anything that is not based in love. So those frequencies are now, the archetypes that sustain those frequencies are crumbling and dissolving away. And you know, at the beginning of the show, Todd, you were talking about your daughter coming and how special these kids are. That's so perfect for what I'm gonna share with you right now. The, there is a, billions of souls on this planet that were born after the shift of consciousness that took place in 1987. And they are known throughout the universe as these are all of the souls, the vast majority. There have been light workers and being, I mean, uh, higher beings that have come in with these souls to guide and help direct them. But since 1987, the vast majority of souls born on this planet, which as logically are include billions in every country of the world, all over the planet, have come in. They're known throughout the universe as the holy innocents, and they're coming in karma-free. And just the, the very little bit of history about these souls is that when we had our fall from grace and literally bent the axis of the earth and fell off of the spiral of ev evolution into this miscreated mass that we've called the wheel of karma in order to prevent these holy innocents these new souls coming in from getting pulled and sucked into that and trapped in that as all the rest of us were our father mother god asked that they be held in the temples around the electronic belts around the central sun until humanity could shift our energy enough to raise off the wheel of karma back onto the spiral of evolution. And that miracle literally occurred through the events that took place at Harmonic Convergence in 1987. So these souls, while they were in the inner realm, that took much longer than anybody expected, but they were in there for eons of time. They were growing and learning and developing as sons and daughters of God. And their I am presence took all that knowledge because they knew they were coming into this contaminated earth for this unique experiment to assist the earth in transforming. Uh, never has a planet that's fallen this far into the abyss of separation and duality been given the opportunity to move forward this quickly into the light through the shift of consciousness and awakening of the masses of humanity on the planet. So this was the experiment. So these souls knew they were coming in. So their training was bringing in knowledge that contains the viable solutions to all of the maladies existing on earth and 
ways of helping to awaken humanity and to help in the process. And those that training was encoded into what was called consciousness codes and encoded in their DNA for when they would embody on earth and when that would awaken. Well, in 2018, actually is when we had reached a vibration collectively on this planet that the consciousness codes of these souls, billions of souls all over the planet, young people, the millennials and those on down to infancy were activated so that they could start receiving this information. Now, of course, looking at the outer world, not all of the young people are out picturing the kind of behavior that you would think these enlightened souls would because they did get trapped and overwhelmed by some of the oppressive energy and the manipulation and the control and you know we have free will and we have the ability to do this but the vast majority of them are now standing in readiness awaiting the responsibility of becoming stewards of the earth, taking over leadership transformational positions. And they're going to begin this process of the, literally the changing of the guard, of the old guard with the uh, activities that begin in 2022. And the reason they're able to begin now at this level is because the old paradigms, the matrixes, that sustained greed and corruption, the abuse of power, the war consciousness, hate, us against them, all of that. Those matrices are being dissolved, dismantled, and you know, uh, crumbling away. So this is all over the world. So right now what's happening, for instance, when you're talking about the uh, bans and the immigration and, and you know, um, all of the people that are fleeing their countries because of abuse of power and all of that. These precious souls are everywhere. Mm. And when they begin awakening, which they're, they're in the process of doing now, but they're, now that this, the old manipulative control is being removed and it's being removed through love. It's being loved into the light. This isn't a, a negative battle that's going on, not a war, but they are being loved back into the light. Some of them are kicking and screaming as they're being dragged into the light, <laughs> but that's the process. But just as an example, everybody, I shouldn't say everybody, because I don't know for sure, but the vast majority of all of the immigration and all of the people fleeing their countries, the vast majority of them would much prefer to remain in their own countries, with their own cultures, if they could be safe, if they could be prosperous, if they could have the healthcare and the jobs and all of the comforts that everybody has on the planet that is comfortable in their own country and isn't fleeing. So that would automatically solve this problem of mass integration. You know, everybody in the United States or everybody on the planet isn't supposed to move to the United States, but each and every one of us in the United States, if our children and our lives were threatened and there was total destruction and no place for us to live and no way for us to feed our children or support our families, we'd be doing the same thing. You Absolutely. know, so we can't have this holier than thou attitude. Absolutely. So this is going to free souls from the manipulation and the oppression, it's going to free them all over the world as these souls start taking charge, creating new positive social structures that have win-win situations that aren't this us against them and this greed of looking out for number one and dog eat dog, all of the things that have created all of the problems. You know, we can see it in our political systems, we can see it in our economic systems, even with what's going on like in um, the agricultural industry, the polluting of our food, our water pollution, air pollution, all of that abuse of power, all of that. These 
young people have the heart, they have the willingness, they have the intention, and they have encoded with them in their connective consciousness, the, the viable solutions to those maladies, bringing in new kinds of energy, new ways of growing food that don't have to have pesticides and all mm. of the pollution, ways of eliminating all of the greed that's associated with the big corporate structure that has been willing to pollute our water and to pollute our air and all of that just for the sake of money. And everything that's gone on in the pharmaceutical industry, every structure in the outer world has been manipulated and controlled by what we've been, what has been Absolutely. To as this old guard. And now Absolutely. this is going to begin to really, really shift as we yeah, know. it's it's amazing. A couple of things there. One is it's amazing uh, to me what I pick up on these frequencies. And, and I'm, I guess I've got six. All six were post 87. The first one was 89. So there's a pretty good range here. The last one here that's 2002 when she was born. I've got a grandchild that's two. Uh, I've communicated with telepathically changing his diaper. And, uh, you know, what I pick up from these the, the frequency of these young people is I just try to put everything in kind of human terms is they don't do things that don't align with them. If something doesn't make sense, they don't even consider it, you know, where we were conditioned or oh, you've got to make a choice one way or the other. They just go, mm, there's got to be a third or a fourth option here. But that that is interesting to have watched that frequency rise over this timeline that you're talking about, because that seems to be like the last two to three years when you're really starting to see this come out. Uh and then I was the next thing I was going to ask you, which you already started on, was this 40 day period. Uh, and this and, and let, before I say that, I just want to add something to that whole movement thing. I, I, I love what you said. I love your explanation. And, and I realize as I'm listening to you that the, the that the fir, it would only make sense that the first signs we're going to see of the of the divine love embodying within us and the free energy of the soul being allowed to move at will uh you know unencumbered or un, unimpeded uh, will be just simply people being able to go where they want on the earth and and live where they want and that the freedom itself uh from an energetic basis because you really made a good point people want to stay where they're at i mean that's that's just natural that's their home but to have the freedom there and not have the suppression. And I, that was a very good point, which you made uh, in regard to immigration and people uh, that are seeking, uh, you know, seeking to be able to exercise their, their inherent freedom. Uh, the 40 day period, and we still have about 10 days to go. I know you covered this on your vlog, but just for those who, who haven't seen it, and I'd highly recommend your vlog every Monday, uh, but in terms of what can we do, obviously, there is solid evidence these last two or three months that we hit the 51. This great example that you gave, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch it about the electrons and the whole uh, the way that moves on an atomic level from a quantum perspective, uh, what's observed. But like this has really come on strong. I mean, it's a, even though 2012 to let's just say October of this year, was certainly unique and gratifying and expanding. And, and we have a lot of clarity on it, especially in retrospect. This, this second half or this new phase is a totally different language. It's a totally different experience. I mean, it's just wild in a great way. But there's always that element of how we can contribute in this Trinity energy equally to ourselves, our brother, sister, the collective, um, what can we do? And of course, it always seems to be, you know, the best thing we can do is being true to ourselves. But in terms of this opportunity and the potential that's available in this 40 day period, uh, is there anything that you would point out to people that we can focus on individually within ourselves to contribute equally in this Trinity energy during this 40 day period? Yes. And I well, I'll just briefly say that when we began, you know, when the beings of light said that with the birth of the new decade, we're going to experience things in collaboration with the company of heaven that had never before been attempted. We had no idea what that meant. And within a matter of two weeks, we started experiencing a forced global 
shut down for the first time ever. And the beings of light literally said, regardless of outer world circumstances of what was creating it or what was causing it or whatever, this planetary pause was providing the I am presence of every person to be heard in ways that it had not been before. Mm -hmm. And we went through several shifts in our cellular structures of our bodies and our I am presence has now integrated through the divinity within our hearts for every person in a way that it's no longer just that still small voice within, but it's literally a very powerful intuitive inner guidance if we will ask and if we will take the time to listen. So all of this has prepared us for this 40 day purging process that we're going through. And this 40 day process, it began on November 11th and we have genetic codes within our DNA that are referred to as the 11 the 1111 and the 111111 genetic codes. And these are special codes. 11 is a sacred geometric number that reflects the transformation of the physical into the divine. So our I am presence has been utilizing these codes. And on November 11th, every year, we move through this portal alignment where this activation is greatly accelerated. Then we've moved through the uh, November 19th, lunar eclipse and the December 3rd solar eclipse, which has greatly accelerated this. Today, the flame of the immaculate concept, which is a magnificent crystal and white flame with the Madonna blue radiance holding the divine blueprint for this shift that we're moving through. That's blazing through the earth at this time. Mm. Then on December 12th, this is a very powerful time. Now, 1212 is the day that we celebrate in the outer world, the Mother Mary's aspect as the Virgin of Guadalupe. And so it's been building in momentum that has been building in momentum for over 500 years now. Mm -hmm. And it was not by chance that that's when Mother Mary began coming because she was bringing our attention, the immaculate concept to to us of the momentum of 1212. 1212 is also a geometric code that our I am presence encoded in our DNA after our fall from grace. And this code has been holding the immaculate concept of a greatly accelerated awakening within mm. us. But that awakening could only occur after we were off the wheel of karma, which took place in 1987, and after we had reached a frequency of vibration that allowed our I am presence to activate through for our new higher crystalline solar light bodies, the 12 solar strands of our DNA. And that happened actually in August of 2019, it was the, uh, during the anniversary of Harmonic Convergence, our I am presence was able to activate those uh, 12 solar strands of our DNA. So on 12-12 that year, and 2019 was a 12 year, okay. plus zero, plus one, plus nine. So it was a 12-12-12 day, and our solar strands had been activated. So for the very first time, the 1212 catalyst codes for the awakening of the masses were activated. So those have been building in momentum. So this year, now, because we no longer have the archetypes of the oppressive, uh, manipulative kinds of structures that have held us oppressed and controlled for eons of time, those archetypes have, are being dismantled and shattered. Now this 1212 catalyst code is going to greatly accelerate the awakening within all of us, but it is going to greatly help also the awakening of the young people, the holy innocents that have come in since August of 1987. 
And then this activity is going to be sealed during the solstice on December 20th and 21st. So the most thing that the beings of light can ask or are asking us to do, and I know sometimes we don't feel like we're really getting that guidance, we don't hear it, but your I am presence, every person's I am presence knows exactly what is going on and is integrating these energies, the maximum that we can withstand at a cellular level, uh, according to our being wherever we are at any given moment. So what has been coming that is most encouraging for us to do is one thing, self-care. Take care of your body between now and then. Do things that raise your vibration. Eat the highest frequency of food for your body. Drink lots of pure water. Listen to beautiful music. Be in nature. All of the things that nurture, meditate, prayer, be with your loved ones, all you can do to add to the light of the world. The beings of light want us to know that every one of us on this planet is essential. And we all have been a critical facet of this. And I know there's lots of people that if I say to them, you've been instrumental according to our father, mother, God, in creating a critical mass of divine love for the planet, they would think I was a, a nut because they don't feel like they're doing that. They are feeling frustrated, they're upset, they're angry, they're disappointed, all of these different things. But the reality is every prayer, every meditation, every single loving, kind thing we have done for any person, place, condition, or thing on the planet, for any part of life, is woven into this collective consciousness. And that light is infinitely more powerful than mm -hmm. our anger and our hatred and our disappointment and our judgment and all of those kinds of things. So all of us have been critical. So pay attention to that. And during these 10 days leading up to the uh, solstice, pay attention to the fact that you are being asked to amplify the love of the world in every single way you can on this planet. Anything you do to invoke the light, anything you do to love another person, to help another person, eliminate judgment, criticism, battling us against them, all of that stuff is part of those old paradigms that are crumbling away and that are being dissolved at this time. Now, there are still going to be people fighting tooth and nail to hold on to their power and to not uh, let humanity be in control of our own lives anymore. But their efforts are going to fail. They have lost the structure and the matrices that have held that kind of behavior in a physical reality. So mm. they're going to fail. So we need to just flood them with love, knowing that they're moving out of that. So the more we can do to add to the love and the light between now and then, and then of course, moving into the birth of this new year, knowing that one of the main critical factors of this new year is that there is going to be the initial impulse of what the beings of light are referring to as a generational changing of the guard. Wow. And the old guard is going to just gradually lose their ability. I say this often is that one of my favorite uh, quotes from Buckminster Fuller is that when you're trying to change or create a new paradigm, you don't try to change the existing paradigm. You create a new paradigm and make the old one obsolete. And that's the way mm -hmm. these young people are going to be doing it. As they come forth as transformational leaders, they're not going to try and uh, change the existing archetypes right. that have created so much havoc. They're going to create whole new options, kind of like what we see going on 
with the energy system and sustainable energy compared to fossil fuels. It isn't that the fossil fuel companies are grateful and are allowing new energies to come in, even though they are some of them jumping on the bandwagon because they're losing their ability to, for money if they don't. But it's just, you make the old one obsolete so that we yeah. move on. Fossil fuel based cars are going to become obsolete as we move into electric cars and probably even new kinds of energy that we don't even know Flying about. Flying cars. <laughs> yes, right. But these kids, <laughs> these young people, they are so, in my experience, so upset with us and yeah. what we've done to this planet and how we've abused this planet at their expense, the way they feel about it. Mm. That uh, and that's part of that motivation, you know, that it, we need to move them into a place of love about that instead of just hatred and anger, because that's count. You take one step forward and two steps back when you're coming from that particular place. But that's going to really make a difference and shift. Yeah, that uh, that falls in line with when when I reawoke ten years ago, eleven years ago. I was I, in in the first few months. I was told you're going to have to really bust your butt till you're about 58 or 59. I'll be 60 tomorrow, so we're running a little bit late. But it, what I was told was that, and, and it wasn't obviously about me. It was about all of us sure. who were in this role and said that you know at this after this eight or nine years, this frequency or energetic mass of these young people. It's just going to take it over. And, and uh, I always wondered about that, but uh, you kind of uh, connected the dots there. Another thing that you, one of the several things that you connected the dots on um, or a couple of things is it, I've never heard anybody say that there was going to be an uptick in the collaboration potential of the kingdom of heaven and us. Uh, that that's very powerful. And what I've sensed in my own experience, just over the last three or four weeks, I guess after October kind of hit and there was a bit of an integration and you start to get your faculties together, I noticed a couple of things. One thing that I noticed was that I started to have appeals like I did when I was a little kid and saying, can't the world just be this, or I want this for the world. So it was a very collective earth uh, in its entirety type of appeal. And, and, and the memories came in, oh, you used to do this when you were a kid. The other thing that I noticed that I think is, is uh, in line with what you're talking about, at a, let's say at a human experiential level, moment by moment, is I've noticed that, you know, because we've always known, uh, ask, and it will be given, knock, the door will be open, and so on. And what I've noticed is that when I do this over the last couple of weeks, the response is immediate, like I've never seen before. It just happened to me yesterday. I woke up, my daughter's coming in town. I thought, oh, we just went through the first of the month. Uh, and and the, the program started to take over me. It wasn't bad. But I started to, oh, you know, can you take her to dinner? I mean, what are you going to do? You know, and I just let it go. And I didn't ask for anything specific. I just said, look, I'm a little weak right now. Uh, I had a rough night in dream state. Obviously, I was very busy. Um, can you just help me? You know, can you assist me? I'm here to serve. You know the drill. I mean, the connections there and so on. But I just, from a human level, said, can you... And sure enough, within, well, first of all, a ding went off on my phone and I don't believe there's any mistakes. And I thought, okay, there's number one. Number two, the probably the oldest supporter that we have at Sology, a beautiful brother of mine from New York City, sent me a gift and I thanked him. And he said, oh, I'm going to send you another one. It's two for Tuesday today. And then there was another one. And these are just out of the blue, which would seem like a coincidence, but it was very indicative of what I've experienced over the last three or four weeks. The immediate reciprocation of the appeal from the heart, uh, hard evidence, and it just seems like it's getting bigger and more frequent as time goes on. So 
I just wanted to point that out because I know if it's happening to me, it's got to be happening to other people as well. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you too is in regard, I love the way that you present the polarities of our experience and as well as this transition that we're going through. And I love the way that you kind of put it at the end of uh, when you were talking about that a second ago, how basically this is all deconstructing. Almost like, you know, we don't need to talk about it in the manner we have. And I'm just making up words. I'm not putting these in your mouth. I'm just trying to, to get what I got from it. And at the same time, something that I don't hear a lot of, and I'm going to keep in mind on a personal level, and that is, you know, not to just totally turn away from it, but to actually send those aspects the same love and light and wisdom and, and everything that you can, all the attributes and virtues of the soul characteristics, and just send them as we would send them to those things that are on this side of the spectrum that we can relate with more. I think that's, you know, something that needs to be uh, kind of emphasized because our intentions are more powerful than ever, aren't they? They absolutely are. And you know what you were saying earlier about that, about the the separation and the duality and the negativity and looking, you know, it's like when we look at the belief system of this group and the belief system of this group, and they're both on our mailing list and supporting and believing that we're aligned with their belief. And the reality is, is that in many ways we are. And the, the reason is, is because this is a purging time. All of that negativity has gone on forever, mm -hmm. but it has to be pushed to the surface to be transmuted into light. We can't just say cancel, cancel and right. eliminate millennia worth of uh, our human miscreations. We have to love that energy back into light. And so the way that's brought to our attention is by people acting out adversely in the outer world in such abhorrent ways that it shocks us out of our complacency, like the horrific things that we saw on January 6th. I had written an article about that. That was such a horrific, shocking event, not only for the United States of America, but for the entire globe as people watch that transpire. In, in the horror of it all. And what the beings of light said actually occurred is that collective cup of consciousness, that shock opened people's hearts, cracked people's hearts open to begin invoking light and invoking love in ways that maybe some of them hadn't for a very, very long time. And they said that collective cup of consciousness with people flooding the United States of America with a new level of love and compassion, kind of like what happened initially with 9-11, right. that kind of a horrible event, that literally the veil of illusion was able to be lifted off the mass consciousness of humanity. And so these things have to be brought to the surface. We're certainly not supposed to stay stuck there and keep doing it over and over. But the beings of light have said, we need to not be judgmental. They said, you never know what light is growing and glowing in a crude exterior, even though somebody's acting out so horribly and so uh, negatively and so hate filled. It may be that that person is a powerful being that has come in to activate all this and bring it to the surface. Now, what we're learning, though, as we move forward and the rest of humanity shifts, just like you mentioned, the reason that there's this collaboration increase uh, that's never been attempted is not because we're pitiful and the beings of light have decided to help us more. It's because we have raised up in consciousness enough that we have earned the right for this new level of collaboration. There always has to be that balance between what we're sending out and what we're receiving. God won't do it for us, but the more we invoke the light, the more we raise up and can be cooperative collaborators, then they can intervene in new and higher ways as well. So now we know it's time for all of that old stuff to stop. 
we aren't supposed to stay stuck there and keep doing it. And some people are trapped there and some people mm. are going to keep doing it, even though maybe they've completed what their original contract was and now they're supposed to move into the light. They're not ready to do that yet. But eventually, everybody's going to move into the light sooner or later. It's just a matter of timing on all of this. But what is happening is that those structures that sustain that kind of behavior are no longer viable. They are being right. destroyed and dismantled, and that will be complete with the solstice this year, so that then we can begin calling the holy innocence to the fore to become transformational leaders to create new archetypes and new social structures that are improving the quality of life for everyone on earth with win-win situations for everybody. And that's coming. That's yeah. part of the new earth. And that's very much part of what the immaculate concept of the divine plan is initially really expanding in 2022. It feels like it absolutely you can feel it. I mean, regardless of the fluctuations people have or we have as we take on the energy and process it and integrate and so on. Uh, I've had so many people come on the show in the last three or four months that said, you know, this is going on and that's going on. But you know what? There's this underlying thing that everything's just getting better and better and better. And it really feels like it's happening. But not only is it happening, it's happening faster and faster every day. Which kind of leads me to, to what you just talked about uh, to segue into what I was going to go to next. It was perfect. It was telepathic. Mm -hmm. You know, in one way or another, since I spoke with you, uh, there has there was a period of time, I want to say like August to November, that several different people with their own language and their own flavor of intel talked about a massive growth in uh let's just say the energy of light on the earth or the energy of awareness some people described it as you know five or six billion walk-ins or aspects of ourself to expand to what is what near eight billion souls but just from an energetic standpoint using those as metaphors that there's been this massive influx or expansion of let's just say energy of light that may have ended you know on or about november uh, which leads us to what you were just talking about, uh, the fact that we've reached a level of frequency that we are now in a new field of potential with our collaborators uh, from, let's say, the non-physical world, you know, our, our angels, our guides, and so on. Um, like, we couldn't do that until we were able to bring in this energy as a team and sustain it and then begin to expand it and work with it. So I guess what I'm trying to say is what you're talking about is no small feat. Like we're, I, I think at a point now where the self-love, the self-worth quotients are going up for everybody. And we've done a heck of a job, I think. I mean, this is like a monumental period that we just went through, not to mention what we're going through. Am I close to the your understanding on that? Is there a uh, is there a perception, or do you have any insight on the perception of those soul families and angels and guides and so on? Uh, what their perception of us is, how are we doing that type of thing? Yes, you know we've had an annual World Congress since the first World Congress in August of 1987. So. In August of this year, we had a virtual one because of, of COVID, mm. but we had a virtual one. And every, what the World Congress is, is every year, the Company of Heaven evaluates all the light that has been added to the world by every man, woman, and child throughout the year. And then with that force field of light, they determine what is the greatest need of the hour to benefit humanity. Mm. And for this year, it was creating a quantum field of a new frequency of divine love, comprehensive divine love that would allow the I am presence of every person to anchor and sustain the presence of unity consciousness in every heart flame. Now that was God victoriously accomplished, but the only reason it was able to be accomplished is because of these miraculous shifts that have been taking place 
in all these years, but specifically since the birth of this new decade. So it allowed these incredible shifts. And what unity consciousness is, you know, we've talked about uh, Christ consciousness and enlightenment and our super conscious mind. And we've had all different terminologies for the different shifts of consciousness. But the beings of light said unity consciousness is literally the essence of our father, mother, God that unifies every facet of life in the whole of creation. And so now this, with the integrated, this could only be happen because our I am presence has now been integrated and these new 12 solar strands and the activation of these 12, 12 catalyst codes, you know, many things have cleared the way mm -hmm. for this to happen. But now this new level of consciousness that is in alignment with the divine, <clears throat> excuse me, the divine essence of our father, mother, God is present in every heart flame, whether people are aware of it or not. So what your friends are describing is the manifestation of that, you know, so what does that mean? How are people acting? Well, they're acting. And I know a lot of people feel like they're walk-ins, but they're, I mean, not that there aren't walk-ins, but they feel like, just like you've said, millions have come in. These aren't millions of walk-ins. These are the I am presence now, right. the divinity within those souls taking yeah. over so that their fragmented and fear-based human egos no longer have the predominant influence in their bodies. And it seems like a whole new being of life, yeah. which it, it well literally said. is. <laughs> well said. Yeah, because I'm experiencing uh, in myself, you know, I just notice it. And that's another thing I noticed too. It's not like hardcore. It's like every day you see a little bit of a change, you know, and I notice like if I try to go into a loop or an old pattern or behavior, first of all, it's very difficult to do. Second of all, it doesn't carry the same charge as it used to. You know, it doesn't give me, you know, a, a high or it doesn't give me a, a, a frequency bump or anything. It just doesn't work anymore. It's And it's a very natural kind of thing, which is kind of cool. I guess you could use the terms ease and grace. I yeah. can't believe we already gone through this show. I, I feel like I just went through a, a some type of wormhole with you. <laughs> but I want to ask you one more thing before we get out of here. And certainly if you, there's anything that you want to offer as well. But uh, uh, Judith Kuzel, she comes on every couple of months and she had been talking about the white flame uh, the last couple of times she came on. You mentioned the same thing. I think the words are a little bit different. But I never really heard much about the white flame uh, up until just very recently. And you mentioned it, and I thought that was interesting. Is, is there something you can tell us about what that quality is? What's so distinctive about it in terms of, you know, comparison to some of the other uh, imagery of flame that we might have, uh, you know, been uh, introduced to over the last few years? Sure. We, there are 12 solar aspects of deity that reflect different frequencies of sacred fire from the heart of God. And each age, there is a predominant frequency. This Aquarian age, the predominant frequency is going to be the seventh solar aspect, which is the violet flame, which is the perfect balance of the blue flame of our father God and the pink flame of our mother God. Mm. But the white flame is the fourth solar aspect of deity. And it's very much a part of the purification that's going on now. It's purity, it's hope, it's resurrection, it's renewal, it's restoration, it's ascension, and it is the immaculate concept. So these energies are what we're working with right now in this transfiguring transformation that's going on on the planet as we move forward in the light. And yeah. so it's a, a you're like the uh, you're like the human hybrid soul equivalent of a zip file. <laughs> All this information's <laughs> in this little and you open it and it's like a big jack in the box. I can't wait, by the way, to go tell my kids they're holy and innocent. Good. <laughs> Good. That's perfect. And I just want to <laughs> comment because I know that when people feel like all the old archetypes are crumbling away, that they think everything's going to instantaneously be perfect mm. by the 22nd. And of course, by 2022. And of course, that isn't the way it works. We're mm. multidimensional beings. These shifts take place in the realms of cause. 
and then they filter into the world of effects. And we think of the physical plane as being so real, but the physical plane is actually the least real of mm. all of the dimensions we abide in. And it's the very last frequency to really start reflecting the changes, but we are going to see them. The beings of light have said, we are going to see tangible evidence of this in 2022. And they keep saying, pay attention because yeah. you're going to see it manifesting through the young people, through every, every structure, through politics, through the economic system, through everything. We're gonna start seeing heart-based positive shifts as these young people start taking over as transformational leaders in all of these different areas of humanity. That's going to be an amazing, it's going to be an amazing year, I'm sure. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> I I'm excited. Uh, Good, this is, you. this is great. I'm going to give my kids a hard time about it though. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you one thing. Uh, how can we support you? I didn't know that you had a nonprofit. You might've mentioned that last time, but sometimes I miss things. Uh, I know you have the vlog, uh, but you know, how can we support you? Cause I'm sure there's some people that are going to be tuning in. They're tuning in now or on replay, uh, that might be interested in checking you out a little bit more. Well, we do everything we can to offer the information through as many venues as possible for free. So of course the blogs and the newsletters and a lot of the, uh, previous interviews and all of those things, videos are available for free. And we are sustained by love offerings. We do have books and, and CDs and things like that available. And we have, you know, some uh, bracelets and strands of the 12 solar aspects of deity. So people can bring those crystal energies into their, into their experience. So they can go to our website and just look and see what resonates as, uh, something that you would like to have or support. And we of course have our, our donations and our love offerings, which we greatly, greatly appreciate. Right on, sounds great. Thank Thanks. you so much for uh, ushering us in or uh, feathering out to 2021, ushering us into 2022. I really appreciate uh, what you and your teams do. Uh, and I just wanna thank you on a personal level and on behalf of everybody, uh, I don't know anyone that's been hitting it <laughs> like you have for 50 plus years. Uh, that's absolutely amazing. Uh, I just have to ask you too, uh, because I just had this level of curiosity. I know I asked you this six months ago. There's no way I couldn't have, but wow, what's changed in six months. And you've been at this over 50 years. How does it feel to you on a personal level? Well, it feels because we've been through these major shifts. Uh, you know, and when we began and we went through the 60s, which were, uh, it was a similar time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hmm. In that the young people in that day, many of them were using pot and LSD and things like that, mushrooms to, to awaken and shift consciousness. They weren't supposed to get stuck there and stay there, but they did. Some of them did. Right. But many of them had just created this awakening and this shift and they were when we talk about releasing the old guard like the holy innocents are angry with all of the older people that have created this mess they were talking about drunk don't trust the man you know that was the term that they use meaning anybody over 35 years old you just didn't trust them and make love not war and you know the whole consciousness of creating a love-based world instead of the old patterns and that was an initial impulse of all of this now it's grown and grown until now we're doing quantum shifts right. of that in this lifetime wow that's got to be an amazing thing to watch i'd like to step into your shoes at some point when i get into the akashic and uh, give him permission <laughs> <laughs> just to see how that all went thank you so much well, you're welcome, Todd. I'm very grateful for you and all the light you're adding to the world and all of the wonderful presenters and people you have on. It's really a, a global, mm. unified collaboration that we're all doing together, whether we know each other or are conscious of it. Each of us are weaving our light into the magnificent facet of this divine plan. Yes, it's a beautiful thing. I'll see you uh, down the road, and I hope we can collaborate again in the future, and best of... Uh, uh, everything best wishes to you 
and all yours and all your endeavors. And thanks again. We love you very much. Thank you. I love you too. Bye-bye.